The Norwegian author Tadje G. Simonsen has a background as a historian of ideas. This, combined with a long-time interest and a thorough research into paranormal phenomena, has resulted in a remarkable and a critics praised book, now also launched in English. Our Secret Powers explores the history and nature of phenomena like telepathy, clairvoyance and precognition, and raises the question if consciousness is more than just something inside our heads, more like a mental internet. Yes, uh, I think uh, the usual conception of consciousness is that it's something that is inside our heads uh, and it's a, what you can say a local phenomenon. Uh, but my thought, which is a very old thought uh, and also a very, very modern thought, is that consciousness is not inside our head. It's a collective uh, phenomenon, more like a field of information and uh, the reason I w used uh, the metaphor of the internet is uh, uh, if you ask a person uh, or a person will tell you that uh, uh, internet is inside my mobile phone or inside my PC we, we all know that that's not the case uh, internet is the network between all mobile phones and between all the PCs and uh, in a similar way I think uh, of uh, consciousness it's not something that's inside my head or inside your head or, uh, you know, Jack or Jill's head. Uh, it's between all our heads. So uh, our heads, to put it uh, that way, is more the places where this collective consciousness uh, manifests itself. So, uh, and that would be uh, about similar to the internet, uh, which somehow can manifest in our uh, PCs and mobile phones. And we can make uh, uh, downloads, uh, information, that would be clairvoyance, and we can send emails, and that would be about uh, telepathy then. So I feel uh, the, the internet is a very useful uh, metaphor for, uh, uh, say, modern and also, in fact, a uh, very classical concept of consciousness. But is science now opening up for the possibility that these phenomena are really real? I have found at least five uh, Nobel, winner, Nobel Prize winners in, in physics that uh, are convinced that these phenomena are real. So it's not just kind of fringe field, uh, uh, new age stuff. This It's uh, uh, even people uh, within the real hard science. Uh, it's not mainstream, but uh, there are some, some really uh, stellar scientists that are convinced that these uh, phenomena are real. Does this imply that telepathy and clairvoyance are some sort of common abilities? Yes, uh, because basically they are connected to not to the ego, but to this collective ex uh, expanded consciousness. Uh, they are part of that. It's not part of because I am clever or because I am extremely clairvoyant as a person, really. It's more or less, uh, am I open to the clairvoyance that is there? Am I open to the telepathy that is there as part of, of this uh, uh, collective consciousness we all share? So yes, I think it is, uh, it's very much... Uh, uh, say a uh, collective uh, and common uh, uh, say ability this but uh, of course uh, competence uh, vary as just as some are excellent musicians and some should just uh, limit themselves to sing in the show or something like that so so uh, but basically it's not uh, say it's not an expression of unique abilities it's more uh, on a scale from uh, zero to yeah how far you can go in the book, uh, you also refer to a military project making use of uh, such abilities. It's uh, not so well known, but uh, the American military for 20 years, uh, from about 1975 to 1985, had a project called Stargate. And they uh, tried to train spies uh, using those abilities to uh, detect, um, uh, what we can say, uh, installations uh, and troops and, and activities uh, in, uh, in that was in Soviet Russian uh, territory. Uh, and they uh, claimed to have uh, quite successfully proved that the, the, these abilities uh, a both are real and b can be used for that purpose. Uh, public evaluation found that there were, uh, were too many 
uncertainties uh, in connection with this because when uh, lots of uh, material values and, and, and uh, human lives are in the balance of course uh, the information have to be extremely reliable so uh, it uh, the project was discontinued uh, but uh, both the researchers and uh, the officers and the agents themselves uh, many of them have written about this and uh, I think all of them confirmed that yes this uh, are real phenomena and uh, another quite intriguing topic that you present in the book is uh, the idea of the universe as a hologram. Yeah, a hologram is really a three-dimensional picture where every part of the picture contains the information uh, from the whole picture. Uh, the old poetic way of describing this is that uh, the droplet reflects the universe. And perhaps uh, the universe itself is a hologram. Uh, and that is, uh, some physicist, uh, physicist thinks that, uh, amongst others, the, the great quant quantum uh, physicist David Bohm. Uh, he was an American but was uh, living in England for the most part of his grown-up life. Uh, he thought of the world as being a hologram and that would say that what goes on in one part of the hologram is really also present throughout the whole rest of the uh, hologram. And if the world is uh, constructed as a big hologram, which uh, Bohm thinks, then something uh, that is going on in my head will simultaneously also go on in your head or in the heads uh, of other, all other people and even on other planets if you are open to, to, uh, to that perspective. So that's a, it's a very interesting, uh, intriguing idea. Uh, in my book I don't uh, say that this or this or this uh, model is the right one and the only one. It's just uh, suggestions to, to more or less uh, do mental chiropractics to, to, uh, to need uh, stiffened uh, concepts of reality. But uh, there are, uh, the hologram model is one serious model and there are also other models that uh, makes it uh, likely that consciousness is uh, non-local and, and, and more or less ever-present in the universe. You're also presenting the 18th century German Enlightenment philosopher Immanuel Kant and his uh, description of space and time. Uh, he th said that uh, space and time is not out there. It's uh, more uh, my or our consciousness uh, giving us this structure of reality. Uh, he said it's like looking uh, uh, through glasses. If you have green glasses and you look at the sky, the sky will suddenly be uh, look green. Uh, but it's not because the sky has turned green, it's uh, because of your glasses. And Kant say in a similar way, um, space and time is not out there. It's my consciousness that uh, organizes my reality in space and time. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a matrix that my day-to-day uh, uh, -day consciousness works inside more than it's a part of, say, the deepest reality. And that's a very interesting perspective because then uh, the linear time and, uh, say, local thinking about consciousness uh, falls away more or less. It's a long and complicated story, this, but uh, the essence is that uh, space and time is just a part of uh, a matrix and not they are not real in themselves but now as the new science seems to confirm that these phenomena are real and that consciousness behaves as non-local do you believe that this will create a major paradigm shift in our view of the nature of reality I think so, but uh, as uh, Max Planck was uh, known to have said, uh, uh, science progresses funeral for funeral. So more or less, I think uh, <laughs> the older generations and perhaps even we have to uh, die out for, uh, first because that is a long uh, gradual process. So uh, there are signs that this uh, shift is about to happen. So within a hundred years, I think it's uh, what is called common stock of knowledge. Uh, that is what I think, at least. Uh, but uh, there is a long and uh, thorough process before that happens. And because it's uh, institutionalized, you know, and uh, uh, 
the, the concept of paradigm uh, really goes back to the uh, historian of science Thomas Kuhn and he, he said really that uh, the researcher identify more or less uh, their personality with the par paradigm so if the paradigm breaks down they somehow their research uh, their uh, self-esteem also breaks down with it so they will defend the par paradigm uh, with uh, jaws and claws uh, as long as they can uh, but sooner or later the, will, the heap of uh, anomalies uh, the, the, the facts that doesn't fit with the par old paradigm will will uh, 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 accumulate and when that uh, uh, say heap becomes big enough uh, the old paradigm bursts and we will have a paradigm shine. It, it may be 10 years 30 years 50 years 70 years i don't know but within 100 years guaranteed and what kind of implications will that have on society I think it is very interesting implications. Uh, of course, the paranoid implications that also was a part of this Stargate program is that, oh, can everybody read my mind every uh, every day, uh, every, every dirty thought I have and such things? Uh, or can they control me in that way? I don't think that. Uh, that the kind of detailed knowledge is, is not common at all. But positively said, uh, it can uh, give us a new vision for the world from uh, for uh, to take care of the environment, uh, for healing, uh, for uh, intercultural dialogue, and so and so, because uh, so part of the problem with the uh, modern Western world of the view is that we are somehow uh, atomized. Uh, we are split of subjects, uh, very lonely, uh, locked up in side our own consciousness. This uh, other new paradigm will, uh, to a much larger extent, open to to see ourselves as an integrated part of the whole, uh, with uh, also practical implications for a said uh, and working in the environmental uh, uh, taking care of uh, nature uh, healing and and uh, exchange between people and cultures really so so I'm quite optimistic about the possibilities uh, that this new paradigm uh, will open for us and now your uh, book is out uh, in English yes and what would you say to your English readers I hope you buy and enjoy the book. <laughs> uh, I think it's interesting. And even if you're a skeptic, I, uh, uh, you should read this book because uh, I also uh, have a chapter dedicated to skepticism about the paranormal. Uh, uh, and uh, even if you're after reading that, uh, still are a skeptic, I think there are so many good stories uh, about Abraham Lincoln, about Jimmy Carter, about Ruel Amundsen, about other celebrities and, and stuff, really that is interesting from a cultural perspective. Uh, I'm a, a historian of ideas and a cultural historian uh, by education, and I try to use those perspectives. So it's not just a kind of new age believing book that wants to convince people. I also want to, to entertain and, and uh, somehow to, to tell good stories as well. So I hope uh, it's an enjoyable read, and I think it is uh, also for people not believing in these things. Yes, and I can confirm uh, myself that uh, the Norwegian ver version is a very enjoyable reading. Thank you, Diane. Uh, so I wish you uh, good luck with the, the English edition and hope that it reaches out to as many people as possible. As I said, you don't need to believe anything, just have a good time with the book. Thank you, Diane. Thank you.